we had a bit of a wild day yesterday at one of our markets. Um, so we sell a lot of products that we make here at the homestead from items that we grow here. And so we do a lot of pop-up markets. The one we were at yesterday, a storm came through and uh, it was wild for a few minutes, folks. It destroyed our tent. Um, nobody at the event got hurt. We're thankful for that. I got quite a few things I want to accomplish here today. We got stuff to harvest. I really, really want to get these, these carrots harvested. And we're going to pick our Roma 2 beans that I've been allowing to grow out so we can save seed. We believe seed saving is, um, is extremely important, especially in the climate of the country right now. Here's what I've done. I've allowed the beans to mature. Once the bean has turned yellow, it's finished maturing and it's ready to be harvested. Now it's not a dry bean yet, but I'm going to hang it up so it can finish drying. still a lot of immature beans you can see they're still green I'm gonna give those another week folks my eyes have gotten to the point where I can't I can't thread a needle without my glasses anymore I am thankful for those reading glasses and now let's thread our beans um, a lot of people um, do this when they make leather bridges, which but that's a different it's a different thing, right? That's when beans are are a lot younger and you're drying them for preservation. And we talk to people all the time about what's going on in the world. People in every walk of life, young people, old people, people that have have had parents and grandparents who've been through um, recessions and depressions. And um, we encounter a tremendous number of people that don't believe prepping or, or seed saving or um, taking responsibility. Um, and having a, a long-term plan in place for independence is the right thing for them to do. And I'm good with that. And I hope everybody finds that spot in their life where they are comfortable and where they, they have peace. When I went to go get seeds to plant this year, this particular variety, which is, is Roma 2, was not available. And every seed store I went to said, there are none, there was a crop failure, whatever it was. I'm thankful that I had some seed that I put away last year um, and didn't use, didn't throw away, they didn't go bad, and I planted them with the intentions of doing this right here, with the intentions of saving those seeds. All right. We have our beans strung, and now we'll get them hung so they can dry. 
while we're talking about seed saving, let's go ahead and save seeds from this German Johnson tomato. I told you earlier in the year that we were going with a couple of different varieties of heirloom tomatoes because we want to save seed. We really feel like that's pivotal in our life this year and maybe in the years to come. It's probably the prettiest tomato out of all the German Johnson plants that I've grown. It's also the largest that I've harvested so far. So to me, that says good genetics. So when you save seeds, look at the plants, look at the vigor, look at the fruit production, look for the traits that are right for your situation, for your climate, for what's going on in your life. And what you'll find is through the generations of seed saving, you're going to develop your own personal heirloom tomato. After two or three generations, you're really going to have your own heirloom tomato. It might have started out as a German Johnson, right, that I bought from Johnny Seeds or whatever. But after three generations, then it's Pruitt Homestead German Johnson because I have selectively gone after traits that I like. There are a couple of methods that I've used for um, harvesting seed from tomatoes. Um, and this is going to be uh, my favorite. Um, and that is a fermentation of the, uh, the seed pockets within the tomato. I'm going to do it on this... Uh, this paper plate just because I don't want to make a mess. Let me sharpen that knife. I'm just going to open up the tomato and let's start revealing the seed cavities. Ultimately that's what we're trying to do is get down into the seed pockets. So I can see there's seed pockets here, there's seed pockets here. There's this seam here that's the middle of the tomato. So I'm just going to kind of slice into the flesh here and reveal those seed cavities. So you can see we have seed pockets here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoop those seed pockets out. I'm not going to waste this tomato. We'll, we'll eat this tomato some way. Um, but I just want to get these seed pockets out of here and get the gel. Not just the seeds, but the seeds and the gel. Just with your fingers, just scoop that out, you see? Just scoop out the seed pockets. So you can see, we've got all the seeds out of those seed pockets. It's completely clean. And now all we have is flesh, and we could just eat that. You know, we talk about genetics. Well, flavor is on the top of my list when it comes to genetics. I don't want just a big tomato. I want a big tasty tomato. So let's give this a shot. Let's see if we like the flavor profile. Mm. Not overly acidic. A sweetness in there. A very good tomato flavor. We'll go ahead and take another slice out of that, right? and reveal more of the seed pockets. And you can see lots of seeds. I love how beefy the tomato is. The seed pockets really aren't that big. We have a lot of flesh in this tomato and that's what I like on my bacon and tomato sandwiches. Just scoop it out, right? Scoop out the gel. You want the gel and the seed. It's just as pretty as it can be. Look at the flesh. Everything I desire in a great, great tomato sandwich. Let's take another slice out of this. We should be revealing the seed cavities on the opposite side of the tomato now. Oh yeah, there we go. Look here. Right. 
that's a great cross section of that tomato. Again, you can see the, the seed pockets are not that big at all. Now that we have our seeds and the gel from the seed pockets, um, we're going to put those into a jar. I'm just going to use a half pint jelly jar. I will put our seeds down in there. Don't lose any seeds. All right, you've worked this hard to get all those seeds. Let's let's not be wasteful now. All right, you're going to see some seeds are floating, some are at the bottom. All right, don't let any of that stress you out. It doesn't mean anything. Now just take you a piece of paper towel and cut you a little square out of it, you know, just to go over the top of your jar, right? And we're going to put a rubber band on that to hold it tight. Put a rubber band around it. You want to allow air in and out of the jar, right? What we're doing is we are going to put this away and allow this to ferment for about seven to, seven to ten days. And what's going to happen is the fermentation is going to cause the gel around the seed to dissolve. That is going to be it for us here today, folks. We got a little weather moving in. So we're going to take a pause for the day. We are grateful that you have chosen us out of all the YouTube channels out there to come and spend a little bit of your day. I hope it's been a blessing in your life. We love you. God bless.